I'm Gail Armstrong and I've been involved in bat conservation for just about 25 years. That involves giving advice to people whose operations might impact on bats, um, talking to people about how they can encourage bats and help them, uh, raising awareness of the problems that bats face. We also do quite a lot of monitoring for the National Bat Monitoring Programme and sometimes that's as simple as standing outside a building counting the bats as they emerge in the evening to eat their food. And that's really great fun and a lovely way for new people to get involved because it's so simple. You learn such a lot by observing them at close quarters and that's really what I love about it because you see things that maybe no one's seen before in bat care. I've looked after probably about 11 species and, uh, and also the other work we do, counting at roosts and surveys and so on. And it, I always think that the one I'm watching is the, the best one ever. So I've got a rather special bat in here, which is a Lysler's bat. And Lysler's bat is a medium sized species for the UK. And this uh, little fella came to me um, a couple of years ago. A local lady found him lying in the snow uh, and he was very underweight and he's actually the first time we found a Lysler's bat in Lancashire. Unfortunately he damaged his thumb so he can't climb and he can't hang on very well which means he's not releasable but he's absolutely gorgeous, lovely thick fur. There aren't many people who have an encounter with this little fella and then uh, aren't completely entranced to be honest. If you should ever come across a bat on the ground, it would look something like this one and it would probably be quite still. Never pick it up in your bare hands in case it should be scared or injured and bite you. But you could wear gloves like workman's gloves like these or an easier way really is to just use a bit of a cloth, an old towel and then you can just drop that over the bat and scoop it gently up. Um, use something like an old ice cream tub or a shoe box, punch some holes in so that the bat can breathe and then all you have to do is drop that straight in and put the lid on. The bat will naturally want to hold on to the cloth um, so it generally that's the easiest way. Um, if it's going to be in there for more than a couple of hours most bats found on the ground are thirsty so you can use something like the top of your milk bottle and just put a little bit of water in and then that can go into the box and then the bat will quite happily sit in there for several hours until you can get someone like me to come and collect it. Bats are all protected under the law in the UK and the reason for that is that there was evidence of large-scale declines in bats through the 20th century and in 1981 we passed the Wildlife and Countryside Act to protect all bats because of these, uh, the evidence of these massive declines, in some cases 75% or more. And since the protection, the numbers have started to recover in most cases, but they are still his at historical low levels. It, it is an absolute privilege to be able to uh, interact with them, make them better and get them back to the wild. They are absolutely fascinating and just the, the way that they live their lives, which is so alien to us, that they echolocate and they fly. And I let a bat go, and it goes off to live, hopefully, a long and productive life. And I've had a small part to play in that, and I think that's just magic. <laughs>